Right, I asked this in a previous video. I'm gonna start with exactly the same question. Are you a golf snob? If you are, switch off now because this won't be of any interest to you. Well, hopefully you stuck around to see what is the average golfer going on about this morning. And uh, it is a grim morning. We are, well, we are. That is what I'm looking out at. It is pretty much underwater, but the bay is still, the driving range is still open and we're gonna carry on testing. I have looked at some alternative club suggestions when sort of looking at uh, gapping at the top end of your bag in recent uh, videos. I'm gonna carry on that this morning. And I mentioned the golf snob bit. A lot of us would literally look at this club on the shelf and dismiss it straight away. Question is, what is it and should you really be turning the other cheek to this golf club? Right, okay, so you've answered the first question and you've stuck around to find out what it is we're looking at. If I mention the name Seven and Wood, what are you gonna do now? Yeah, a lot of you have stopped and switched off already and refusing to watch any further. But should you be continuing to watch? And I think the answer is yes, you should. I don't say this will apply to every golfer, but I think the large majority of average golfers can benefit from opening their minds and looking at and considering a few different alternatives when it comes to the top end of the bag. Maybe the bottom end as well, we'll get that in another video. In recent videos, I looked at um, hybrids, seven hybrids, five hybrids from Mizuno, and it opened my eyes to thinking again, the whole thing, what we try and do, or what I try and do as a channel, is try and make suggestions and considerations for golfers who are average, who struggle with certain aspects of the game, whether that be club head speed, resulting in ball speeds, resulting in poor launch, poor carries, then they're the kind of things that I like to consider when I'm doing a review. And the seven wood was again a recommendation of a number of people who've said they'd like us to have a look at it. Anyway, I've managed to get, and it's the only one in this whole bay, this tells you about the popularity of this club and how readily available they are. But this is a seven wood and it's from Taylor Made and it's the M6. And it's 21 degrees. So it's not a seven uh, iron equivalent in terms of loft. It's 21 degrees worth of loft. So you've got to bear that in mind when you're considering what this is going to do in terms of performance. And it surprised me a little because I thought it would be uh, weaker lofted that, than that, but it just shows much like the irons, everything has moved down a peg. And yeah, we've got a 21 degree uh, seven wood in hand. Other things to consider different than perhaps, um, obviously the longer irons in the bag and even the hybrids is there's a much longer shaft. I'm reaching over because I've just done the video on the, um, well, this is a seven hybrid. And hopefully from there, you can see the difference between the two is sort of four inches in length in terms of the shaft. So there's, there's a lot more uh, variables that you've got to consider and what you, what you want it to do in terms of your bag. But then if you consider it, and we're going to do a lot of considering, let's see if we can find a perfect three wood. And let's have a look at the shaft length on three wood. And again, we've probably got another two inches in terms of length between the M6 three wood, that is, and the seven wood. And why am I mentioning that? Well, we all know because like from a control perspective, you'd much rather have the shorter shaft in hand. It gives us a, a great opportunity of finding that sweet spot in theory. But who might it suit? Well, like I said, slower swing speeds, maybe someone who's struggling with uh, launch, but I don't even know whether it might suit a heck of a lot more players who just gives a lot of versatility too in terms of having in the bag. I'm going to it's a confidence builder again you you know you feel like you've got a sort of uh, i would imagine it's a shorter shaft like we've just demonstrated in the three wood but it's not like it's not three wood it's not got three wood loft in terms of what you look down on in the face as well so you're seeing and the first thing to say in the you can't see it and i keep on complaining about that and i don't blame you is ball flight because that thing has just gone up airborne it's that carry that I said that a lot of people will, or the launch that a lot of people will struggle with, with equivalent, so 21 degrees, what's that, maybe, maybe, um, maybe a strong lofted four iron in the bag. Um, and when you consider, do you want a four iron in the bag or do you want a seven wood? I think that's when you understand the considerations. How many golfers, answer down below, comment down below, 
how many of you are carrying four iron we've looked at this again in recent videos how many of you should be carrying a four iron and how many of you could drop a four iron and put something like this in same loft arguably might be sort of similar numbers in terms of performance but far easier it's absolutely flying far easier for us to hit i mean can i get my four iron to go anywhere near those kind of distances that i'm seeing out there no no i can't so it would beg the question you've got to look at gapping it would fit into somewhere but what i'm gonna do i'll carry on hitting golf balls and we'll look at where it might sit in for me and where it might fit in for you but we'll look at some numbers look at some performance and then we'll do an overall evaluation Right, so as ever, let's not mess around too much and carry on with a waffle. Let's get straight into the numbers. Uh, what I forgot to mention during the video is that uh, I hit from a small tee and then I hit from the deck as well because I think this is a club that you'd use in both scenarios. Uh, start off from the tee. Uh, so easy, like I said, just a little bit. I don't know, about a five milli tee I probably had on and it's so easy to pick up. Caught it really clean, obviously, from the tee. Numbers were fantastic. Look at that. I mean, it's like... 135 ball speeds, 3-2 spin, 2-1-4 on average carry, but some real consistent carries. Talked about that launch at 15.1. It's just what a great golf club to have in, I mean, 214, like I said, comparing to, I think my four iron with equivalent loft is around a 190 carry. So it's something, like I said, and we've, we've looked at this, don't ever think that you fit in your clubs based on purely on loft because a 21 degree seven iron is clearly performing very much different, uh, seven wood rather, is performing very different than a 21 degree four iron. So make sure when you're doing your gapping at the top end of the bag, you consider a lot more things than just straightforward uh, loft comparisons. Then I took it off the deck. Again, you'll see uh, dispersion here is a little bit more variable in terms of front to back. And that's largely because of the pureness of strike, the ability to catch a little bit or not catch a little bit of mat before the ball. So more variations, but again, overall ball speed, 134, 3-1 spin. 208 carry, and that was largely affected by one in particular that dropped off that I got that, uh, that little bit heavy. But again, that's a reality of the average golfer. That's what happens. You're never, I've said this a hundred times before. When you're reviewing clubs, yes, uh, we want these perfect scenarios and perfect numbers. That's not what happens in reality. That's exactly what I keep explaining. What was it? 198 was my worst, 219 was my best. Was that anything to do with the club in terms of dispersion? No, it was not. It was due to the quality of strike from me, and that's exactly what I'd do out there on the golf course. Uh, th them kind of things, this idea of dispersion is related. Anyway, different argument. Right, point is this. Don't be a golf snob. Don't be a golf snob like me. I mean, like I said, I put myself in that bracket dismissing clubs that seven wood. Do I need a seven wood? I, I, I mean, it, I, I was going to say something. Yeah, it, it, you, an old man's club. That's what I would refer, what had referred to it as. And, uh, you know, it's an ignorant perception of it. Um, but that's, again, being perfectly honest, I would have viewed it in the past. But what an absolute weapon to have in the bag. Um, I think the important thing for me as an individual that I've learned is that the gapping element in terms of where does it fit in uh, you'd have to have a serious look and uh, but it's a real option and again i would think a great weapon for a lot of average golfers out there anyway as ever thank you for watching i am done for the morning it's all about editing now but at least i can get back in the warm i'll see you soon